Now let's try this question. A, B, C, D, E, and F are a group of friends from a club. There are two doctors, one lecturer, one architect, one accountant, and one lawyer in the group. There are two married couples in the group. The lawyer is married to D, who is a doctor. Okay, so we don't know who is male, who is female. So I write, write spouse one, spouse two. Okay, so the lawyer is married to doctor that is D okay then C uh, the accountant okay so accountant and that is C is married to F who is a lecturer so lecturer F okay A is married to D so this is A precisely and E is not a doctor so now we are left with E and B Okay, there were two doctors, so one doctor is already there, so the other doctor should be B, and uh, then the remaining uh, profession is architect, so E is architect. Okay. Uh, no lady in the group is either an architect or an accountant. That means accountant is not uh, female, that means accountant is male. Right, that means lecturer is female because they are husband wife. So that is female. Okay, now what is E's profession? E's profession is architect. How many members of the group are male? Okay, see in this case uh, we, we know that architect and this lecture, uh, this uh, architect and accountant. Two of them are uh, definitely uh, not uh, females, but for remaining four, we are not so sure, right? We don't know the status of A and D, so we cannot say how many males are there, okay? So that is cannot be determined. I hope you are clear. Okay, select a pair of sentences that relate logically with the given statement. We have already done, done these sort of questions in our previous session. Here we have either or combination. So one of the things should happen, right? Either Sita is sick or she is careless. So I assume this to be P or this is Q, right? So if P is not there, that means Q is there, right? Or if Q is not there, that means P is there. Okay, so... Now let's check the options. A, B. A is Sita is not sick. That is negative P. If negative P is there, that means Q should be positive. That means Sita is not sick. That means she is careless. So Sita is not sick. That means she is careless. So we have A, D combination is correct. Okay, no need to check further. Now, uh, Ram, uh, Ram gets a swollen nose whenever he eats hamburgers. Okay, that means whenever he eats hamburgers, he gets a swollen nose. So I assume this to be P, this to be Q, right? So if P, then Q. That means if not Q, then not P. So we check the options. A, B, Ram gets a swollen nose, Ram does not eat hamburgers. Okay, so that's wrong. So in fact, if I check this one, Ram does not get a swollen nose, that is negative Q. That means uh, Ram does not eat hamburger, that is negative P. So this one is correct. Okay. And other correct one is... Uh, P to Q, that means if P then Q, that means uh, uh, he eats hamburger, so that is option A and uh, he gets a sw swollen nose, so that is D and A, right, he eats hamburgers, he gets a swollen nose, so either D, A or C, B, so among the options C, B is correct. Now, let's see this question. There were X pigeons and Y manas in a cage. One fine morning, P of them escaped 
to freedom if the bird keeper knowing the only that the value of p was 7 that means in all pigeon plus manna seven birds uh, escaped to freedom okay and uh, he was able to figure out without looking into the cage that at least one pigeon has escaped then which of the following does not represent the possible x y pair okay so the question is really simple no need to go for any sort of paperwork see here x represents uh, pigeons and y represent manna now at least one pigeon has to be there that means the value of y should be less than 7 definitely the number of manna should be less than 7 okay. obviously then only if the seven uh, birds are fl uh, uh, flying away they would have at least one pigeon okay suppose i take the example of this option 2 seven pigeons and uh, uh, two uh, mana right so if uh, two mana are flying away that means uh, five pigeons are also uh, flying away okay but in this case right if all the manas are flying away that then, then there will be no pigeons who will be who will be flying okay so this is wrong all of them are correct okay so does not represent the possible xy pair that means this is not a possible xy pair i hope that's clear to you okay now this question uh, consider the following steps put x is equal to 1 y is equal to 2 okay okay so i start x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2 then replace x by xy so x is equal to 2 right so this is the second step then replace y by uh, y y plus 1 so y is equal to 3 so if y is equal to 5 go to step 6 that means stop otherwise go to step 5 okay step 5 is go to step 2 right so further x we will be replacing by xy so x is 2 and y is 3 so the new x is 6 then replace y by y plus 1 so that is 4 so still it is not 5 so further we have to go to the step 2 so further x by x uh, x y and y by y plus 1 so now y is 5 okay so when y is 5 x is 24 okay so that's pretty simple 116 people participated in a singles tennis tournament having a knockout format the players are paired in the first round the winner of the first round are paired up in the second round and so on till the final is played between two players okay so if after any round there are an odd number of players left one player is given a buy that is he skips that round and plays the next round with the winners okay find the total number of matches played in the tournament okay see in this case what is happening suppose uh, see once 116 is a very big number i would like to give you the example of knockout what exactly is knockout suppose uh, we have uh, maybe uh, four players right say a b c and d now first match these two people will play right so one of them will be winner right whoever is this maybe a or maybe b but one of them will be the winner the winner of these two will play the game with c right and winner of this game will play with the uh, the game with the last person that is d so if there are four people there will be three game one two and three similarly if there are five people say p q r s and t so one between these two winner of these two will play with this winner of these two will play with this winner of these two will play with this okay so in all four games will be there so that is what is a knockout tournament or knockout playing uh, no, knockout format i'm sorry so in this case 116 participants are there right so the total number of matches played in the tournament will be one less than 116 that is 115 so that's pretty simple no need to go for all the ramayana that is given over here okay even if you go by that method you will be getting the same answer but uh, but that will be time consuming so if at all you understand the uh, the meaning of knockout format you can do this question very easily 
Now uh, see this question. The last time Rahul bought Div Diwali cards, he found that four types of cards that he liked were priced at uh, rupees two, three point five, four point five, and rupees five each. As Rahul wanted thirty cards, he took five each of two kinds and ten each of the other two, putting down an exact number of ten rupee note on the counter payment. How many notes did Rahul give? Okay, so first we note down. Type one. I, I I don't say that it is rupee of rupees two or three point five. I'm just writing down type one, type two, type three, type four. Now he took five each of two kinds, right? So five card of this type, five card of this type, and ten cards, ten cards. Now in after all, we want a figure that is multiple of ten, right? That is the sum of the entire. Uh, that means the total sum is multiple of ten. Okay, so now you can see among the prizes, uh, two and sorry, two and five. They are full figure uh, integers, but three point five and four point five they are not integers. So if I multiply three point five to five or four point five to five, then they will give me the uh, Fractional value that is the decimal numbers, right? But we want the total to be a uh, round figure that is multiple of ten. So I have two options, right? Three point five into five plus four point five into five. So they will be both of them will be uh, point and in point fives. So when they will be added, they will be uh, the sum of them will be integer. So one is this option. Otherwise, three point five into ten, four point five into ten, two into five, and uh, five into five. Okay, so in that case, what will happen? Thirty-five, forty-five, and I'll be getting a figure that is multiple of five, but not multiple of ten. So if I add all of them, I'll be getting the unit digit as five. Okay, so that is also ruled out because the unit digit has to be zero. So I'm left with five into three point five, four point five, two, and five. Right, so five into I can do four uh, plus three seven and one eight. So five into eight that is forty. Then ten into seven that is seventy. So in all hundred and ten rupees. So that is eleven notes of ten rupees. Okay. So other options do not match. The sum is thirty over here since he bought thirty cards. So if we uh, place three point five somewhere over here or over here, the sum will not be a multiple of ten. Okay, so this way you can do this question very easily. I hope that's clear. X and Y are playing a game. There are eleven fifty pesa coins on the table, and each player must pick up at least one coin, but not more than five. The person picking up the last coin loses. X starts. How many coins should he uh, pick up at the start to ensure a win? No matter why, what strategy Y employs. Okay, so it's X turn. Then Y turn, then X turn, and then Y turn. Okay. Now, since the person who is picking up the last coin is losing, that means, and if X has to win, that means this story, right? The story should end with ten coins. After X picks up the last coin, uh, there should left, uh, there should be just one coin that has to be picked up by Y, right? And uh, at the last also, X should not pick up more than five. Okay, so what we can do? We can go by backward approach. That would be really simple to do. Suppose x pick up, uh, x picks up four. Now in that case, uh, why may pick up one, two, three, four, or five? Right? Any. Now we just have to check whether if x is picking up four and y is any of them, then x is left with x should be left with uh, between uh, one to five. Right between one to five. Now x four, y uh, one, so x can pick five. So the total will be ten, and the eleventh coin has to be picked up by y in that case. So four, five, six, then four, then four and three seven, and three ten, four and four eight, two, four and five nine, and one. Okay, so this is the perfect solution, right? If they ad adopt this uh, strategy, if X adopts this strategy, ten uh, coins will be finished by the chance uh, in the chance by the last chance of X. After that, one coin will remain on the table that has to be picked up by Y. So he will be losing. So four is the correct answer. But suppose we take up any other option. So what happens? Let's judge. 
suppose x uh, picks up 3 y may 1 2 3 4 5 so 3 and 4, 4 3 and 1 4 so in that case x at max he can pick up uh, 5 at max he can pick up 5 so 5 6 7 8 9 so one coin beam will be left type left out from 10 so that y will pick up so in that case the 11th coin has to be picked up by x so he will be losing okay so no need to check further uh, if x, x picks up 3 he will be losing similarly if i take for f uh, for 5 so the same case 5 and 1 6 so no problem but over here the problem will be there here 5 and 5 10 okay so the remaining 11th coin will have uh, x will have to pick up okay 5 and 5 10 so even in this case uh, x will be losing so this is a single case where x will not be losing in uh, at all okay whether y picks up 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 in his chance so i hope that's clear the auto fare in Ahmedabad is calculate, you calculated using the meter reading and the following process. The meter reading in PESA is rounded up to the multiple of 4 just greater than this reading. For instance, if the meter reading is 37 PESA, it is rounded up to 40 PESA. The resultant is multiplied by 12. The final result is then rounded off to the nearest multiple of 25 PESA. If 53 PESA is a meter reading then what will be the actual fare okay so that's pretty simple first of all 53 paisa we need to round uh, it up to uh, nearest multiple of 4 that is 56 paisa so that is 0.56 rupees and then multiply by 12 then we have to round it off to nearest multiple of 25 paisa so 12 6 are 72 So it is 6.72 so nearest multiple of 25 is 75.75 so it should be 6.75 right juhi and bhagyashree were playing simple mathematical puzzle juhi wrote a two digit number and asked bhagyashree to guess what it was juhi indicated that number was exactly thrice the product of its digits so that's pretty pretty simple question you just go backward instead of uh, guessing the number so 6 3s are 18, 18 into 3 54, so it cannot be the correct option. 4 2s are 8, 8 3s are 24, so this is the correct option. Okay, 4 2s are 8, uh, the product of uh, its digits, right? So the number is thrice uh, the product of a digit. So product is 8, 8 into 3, that is 24, so this is 24. So that's correct. After paying all your bills, you find that you have rupees 7.2 in your uh, two zero in your pocket. You have equal number of 50 pesa and 10 pesa coins, but no other coins, nor any other currency notes. How many coins do you have? Okay, so that's pretty simple. Uh, you can go by options as well, or you can calculate it also. Suppose you have X number of 50 pesa coins, so the value will be 0.5X plus 0.1x because number of coins in bo uh, of both the denomination are same and the total is 7.2 so x comes up to 12 right so 12 50 pesa coins and 12 uh, 10 pesa coins so in all 24 coins okay even you can go uh, by backward approach as well so suppose 8 is the correct answer so 4 and 4 so yet this 2 rupees and this is uh, 40 pesa so but we want the total to be 7.2 so it's incorrect similarly you can check the remaining options okay and even if you make the equation that is also pretty simple now in this set there are five questions uh, precisely this is a problem of data analysis okay uh, allowed has received a large number uh, large order for stitching school uniforms from Mayflower school and little flower school he has two cutters to cut the fabric five tailors to do the stitching and two assistant to stitch the buttons and button holes uh, each of these nine persons work ex for exactly 10 hours a day each of the Mayflower uniform requires 20 minutes for cutting the fabric one hour for stitching and 15 minutes for stitching the buttons and button holes on the other hand, each little fly uniform requires 30 minutes, uh, 1 hour and 30 minutes for cutting, stitching and stitch, uh, button holes respectively. Okay, so first of all what we can do since there are 5 questions in this set, we can just uh, 
uh, arrange the data in a tabular form right so we have three types of persons working over here cutters then tailors and button assistants okay and everybody is working for 10 hours so cutter total number of available hours for us two cutters were 10 hours 20 hours tailor uh, five tailor 50 hours and assistant uh, two assistant with 10 hours so 20 hours right now each of uh, mayflower mayflower dress each take 20 minutes of cutting the fabric this is in hours and this is in minute be careful a uh, one hour for stitching 20 minutes for cutting the fabric 60 minutes for stitching and 15 minutes for uh, buttons okay then little flowers 30 minute 60 minute and 30 minute okay now we take the questions one by one on a particular day a lord decided to complete 20 little fly uniforms how many mayfly uniforms can be completed on that day okay so first of all let's uh, find out how uh, how many hours does it take uh, to make 20 little uh, flower uniform okay so little flower 30 minute of cutting so in a 30 minute cutting for per one dress so 20 for 20 uniform it will be precisely uh, in one hour two dresses so for 20 dresses 20 uniforms 10 hours so we are left with 10 hours okay 10 hours of cutting then uh, 30 hours of tailoring because one hour per dress so we are having 50 tailor hours so 30 hours for tailoring and then uh, 30 a minute of uh, assistance so that precisely once again 10 hours okay or if at all you are confused at any stage uh, in conversion between minutes and hours then you can calculate the entire thing in hours okay so precisely it is 20 uh, 20 hours that means it is 1200 minutes this is uh, 50 into 60 that is 3000 minutes and this is 20 into uh, 60 once again 1200 minutes okay so the problem will become easy for you and the calculation will be done faster now we are left with 600 minutes then uh, 1800 minutes and then 600 minutes okay so little flower work is completed now we have to make mayflower uniforms so 20 minute in cutting so in 600 meter a minute uh, we, uh, one can cut this um, uh, these persons can cut 30 uniforms right so 20 minute and then in this uh, yes 30 1800 divided by still it is 30 uh, 30 hours uh, 30 uniforms okay so at max 30 uniforms can be made since assistant are taking less time so need, no need to calculate further okay if a lord decides to complete 30 little fly uniforms only and do nothing else on a particular day how many total manners will be idle so 30 little fly uh, uniforms so 30 into 30 900 minutes have gone so it's left with 300 minutes in case of cutting then um, 30 uh, into 60 that is 1800 so 1200 minutes this and then 30 into 30 900 so 300 minutes this so 12 and 6 1800 minutes that means 30 man hours will be idle okay 18 uh, 100 minutes that is 30 man hours are consumed I, i'm sorry idle okay so that's pretty simple what is the maximum number of little flower uniforms that a lot can complete in a day little flower so in that case we have to find out the time on in each case right so 30 uh, uh, 30 minute in cutting one dress and available hours are 1200 so 40 dresses so uh, 40 dresses can be cut so we just have to check the least time 
then 60 a minute in stitching so 50 and in this case also 40 okay so at max he can complete 40 dresses so that's pretty simple a lot has an option to hire one more employee of any category which category should he hire to uh, get the maximum increase in production capacity assuming that he needs to stitch only mayflower uniform on that day okay so only mayflower uniform so suppose cutting 1200 hours uh, 1200 minutes are available 20 minutes that means 60 dresses can be cut uh, in this case 50 can only be made and in this case uh, 80 so number of tailors are becoming less okay so if he hires one teller his productivity will increase okay if he has one more assistant what is the maximum number of mayflower uniforms that he can complete in a day so this is the data of mayflower only and we uh, can see that there is a shortage of a uh, tailor right not of assistant so if assist if tailors are higher then only productivity will increase otherwise no okay so in that case also 50 will be the maximum number of uh, uniforms that can be stitched i hope all the questions are clear